So now that we've named all the bones of the skull, we're going to look at some of the individual bone markings and features within our skull here. One of the important pieces of pieces within our skull here are these uh, things called foramen, and a foramen is really just a hole. It's really just a hole. So this black area right here, right, those are holes within the bones that allow certain things to pass. What do we allow to, what, are, what do we want to move in and out of our skull? Well, the first thing would be nerves. We need nerves to move in and out of our skull in order to reach things outside of our skull. Um, so think of your facial nerve, right, which would come down the outside portion of your cheek here. It needs to be able to get outside of your skull, uh, where it attaches to the brain, uh, to get to those surface features. The other things we need are vessels. So blood vessels, arteries and veins. Our brain takes up a massive amount of blood, uses a massive amount of oxygen. We need to be able to get oxygen and nutrients into that brain tissue uh, and then back out and back to our heart. So uh, we've created these foramen or foramina, uh, plural, these holes in order to allow these blood vessels and nerves to pass. Right? We'll start out with uh, the easiest one right here, the largest hole, right? sort of found uh, more on the posterior side. Uh, Posterior inferior, right? Inferior posterior uh, would be the foramen magnum. Right, so foramen magnum. Uh, this is where your spinal cord exits the skull. Uh, so your brain is encased within the cranium, uh, and then your spinal cord is attached to that. The rest of your central nervous system goes down through the vertebral foramina, uh, the holes within our vertebrae and are protected by our vertebrae. This is where that spinal cord actually exits the skull, right? So our foramen magnum. The other ones that we are going to identify right here, you can break up into two groups of three, right? So there are seven total on the inferior side of the skull that we're going to look at, and I'll block them off in different colors here. So, uh, and then it's the same on both sides, right? So if there's one on one side, you're going to see a uh, similar one on the other side. Right? One, two, three, one, two, three. So we're going to look at the right side here and name off some of these foramen. We're going to start down here with our green box uh, that we just did. Uh, and our first one is right here. Okay? That dot right there, uh, that hole this is called the stylomastoid foramen. Come on. The stylomastoid foramen. Uh, and this one's nice because it's named for two bony prominences that it sits in between. So as long as you can identify these bony prominences, um, you should be able to identify where this stylomastoid foramen is. The first bony prominence is your mastoid process. Come on, there it is, the mastoid process. The mastoid process is the big bump right behind your ear. So uh, you can feel that on your cells. Take your finger and stick it right behind your ear. There's a huge bony bump right back there. Uh, there's a muscle that connects all the way down. It's called the stylo, not the stylo. Uh, totally just lost where I was going. Uh, sternocleidomastoid attaches to your sternum and your clavicle goes up to your mastoid process. I was thinking the stylomastoid foramen, but sternocleidomastoid, right? Big muscle. So big muscle along the side of your neck, which is usually pretty apparent when you turn your head, goes up and connects to that big bump there. So you should be able to find that. The big bump right behind your ear is the mastoid process. The other process, which is a little bit harder to see on this piece here, is the styloid process. The styloid process uh, kind of looks like the end of a pen or a pencil. If I were to grab a pen off my desk here, right? Looking at the end of our pen here, you can see a nice little pointed piece. Put it on the blue door. Uh, you can see it, how it comes down to a point, right? That's the stylus. You think of a stylus that you use on an iPad, okay? Similar type thing. Uh, but the styloid is reference to that. And so it's nice and pointy. Uh, let's see if we can find a better picture of that. Let's look here. We'll erase all our writings on here. Ah, this is it right here. So a big bump behind the ear. That's our styloid process. Here's our ear canal. And then this bump right there, you can see a little point, right, just at the tip of the pointer. That is our styloid process. Right, so let's erase those, and we'll come back to our inferior view of the skull. In between our mastoid process and our styloid process is going to be our stylomastoid foramen. 
uh, part of your facial nerve actually comes out of there. Right? So if you want a reference as to what, uh, what is going in and out of there, that's for a nerve. Right? The other two that were in our box here are going to be more for blood vessels. We have the carotid canal. There it is. The carotid canal. The carotid canal is for your carotid artery, so one of the arteries that's bringing blood up to your head. And then just in back of that is the jugular foramen. So the jugular foramen sits just posterior to the carotid canal. The jugular is what's bringing blood back down from your brain, uh, back towards your heart. Right, so our three in the green box here, right, stylomastoid foramen, the carotid canal, and the jugular foramen. The carotid is more anterior towards the front, the jugular foramen is more posterior towards the back. All right, so those are four blood vessels. Right, and then we drew our orange box here around these three. Right, the first one we're going to name off here is the foramen oval. Right? The foramen oval, you can see in the name, is a shape, right? Is the oval shaped. Oval shaped foramen. Uh, shows up much better over here, how that's a nice oval shape. Right? That one sits in between the other two. So you can think of uh, the foramen oval in this orange box here, right? in between the other two foramen. Just to the outside is our foramen spinosum. If you remember talking about uh, the different old bony landmarks and features, a spine is an area where something comes to a point, and it's a little hard to see, but right here, let's actually do it in a different color. Let's do it in a blue. Right here is going to be a ridge or a spine, right? And that sort of surrounds this foramen spinosum. So there's a good way to help you figure out what's the foramen spinosum. We know it's just outside or just lateral of the foramen oval but it's encased or surrounded by a spine. Okay. Our last one is just medial to the foramen oval, and that is called the foramen lacerum. Make sure I spelled that right. Um, so the internal carotid artery after leaving the carotid canal goes through there. Um, and then um, the auditory tube actually passes through this. Um, so the pharyngeal tympanic tube or the auditory tube, this is the uh, tube that uh, allows um, pressure to equalize on either side of your tympanic membrane uh, travel through this foramen lacerum. So that's a pretty important uh, hole there. Right? Uh, and then our foramen spinosum uh, is our blood vessels and membranes around the central nervous system. Right, the foramen oval is uh, part of one of your cranial nerves called the trigeminal nerve, one of the largest uh, nerves in the body. So mostly nerves that are passing through, nerves and blood vessels again, are passing through these different foramen. Right, so foramen magnum, the biggest one, stylomastoid foramen, carotid canal, jugular foramen, foramen oval, foramen spinosum, and foramen lacerum. And those are some of the main ones there. If we come back, there are a couple more that we uh, pick off. First one is our external acoustic meatus. It's your ear canal. Right, so external acoustic. So acoustic means sound, so that kind of makes sense. External acoustic meatus. A meatus is a tunnel. Instead of a foramen, which is a hole, think of like a uh, using a hole punch in a piece of paper. Uh, a meatus is a canal, is a much longer, um, like a cavern uh, inside the bone, right? So a cavern or a cave. Um, so we call this one the external acoustic meatus. You, there it is. External acoustic meatus. And then just a couple others uh, to help us figure out language again uh, are going to be on the front of our face here. All right, you can see a little notch above the eye and then a foramen just below the eye. Right, you can call this the superior I O R optic. 
canal and the inferior. There we are. Uh, foramen. All right, so I messed that one up. But again, the hole above our eye and the hole below our eye here, right? Supra orbital foramen. And so supra, meaning superior, which is where that was coming from, orbital, right, meaning the orbit of your eye, and then foramen, the hole. So we break this word down, right, the hole above the orbit of your eye, the supraorbital foramen. So it's this little notch right here. Sometimes it's called the supraorbital notch as well. Um, and then the infra orbital foramen. And so the reason I point these out is just to help you guys uh, break down words, right? When you start to hear words and they're big mouthfuls of words, uh, if you start to break the words down, you should be able to figure out where these things are. So infra, the word that we're thinking of here is inferior, meaning below. Orbital, again, the orbit of your eye. And then foramen is a hole, so the hole below your eye socket. Uh, these are actually kind of cool. You can feel them on yourselves, the superorbital foramen. If you trace along just underneath your eyebrow, um, just in line with your eye, right? So uh, sagittal or just above the uh, above your eye, you should be able to feel that uh, supraorbital foramen. Same thing, infraorbital foramen is a little divot uh, in your cheek just below your eye. There are nerves that run through here. There's actually arteries that run through there as well. But the nerves, if you hit it just right, you can sort of stimulate that nerve. It would give you the same feeling as uh, like hitting your funny bone, how that uh, nerve tingles all the way down your arm. All right, so that's why we pick those off, though, right? Supraorbital foramen and infraorbital foramen. So that should do it for all of the foramina in our skull.